Good morning to all of you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here in the August company of the professors of ISB and uh, leading uh, professionals in the skill arena. So I will not be talking about the obvious because all of you know the business. So I'll be uh, trying to talk, possibly go beyond and behind the obvious. Uh, when I look at the skill landscape, this cartoon comes to my mind. Uh, typically, this has been the complaint which was voiced by the earlier two speakers. That something somewhere is going drastically wrong either a duplication of work or each one trying to follow somebody else's work, but there seems to be a major confusion. <clears throat> now, when we look at the skill development, uh, there are challenges and opportunities. For example, 9% uh, economic growth is one of the challenge. I have some statistics which says that even in the downturn, the growth will be around 7%. Uh, now, the issue gets muddled up because of this added dimension of poverty alleviation. For many government uh, departments, poverty alleviation has become a major backbone of uh, skill development and that actually complicates the matter which is not the case in uh, Europe or in other uh, developed countries. We these days talk about demographic opportunity now whether it is an opportunity or a liability is something which we need to sort of figure out. Then there is this huge case of uh, school dropouts, um, uh, school educated, highly educated but jobless. Uh, the projections are that services in manufacturing sector are uh, growing, agriculture is growing at a negative rate, poverty will persist, 400 million is the um, uh, data for poverty, 2% of the population is vocationally trained, 67% of labor is either illiterate or at primary level, 69% of unemployed are educated but without any professional learning and this is the point that Murli so effectively made, that, that, that is, there are candidates but they, they are unemployable. <coughs> now, if you look at the market model, there are these four levels where level one is the basic level uh, where training for welders, fitters, construction, uh, shuttering carpenters, bar benders, uh, apparel, that's level one. And if on these two um, axes, if we place where willingness of the market to pay and the student cost of training, then you realize that at the lower level, uh, Virtually there are no takers, in fact the earlier two speakers talked and vehemently said that government has no role. I would uh, with due apologies, I would like to differ and I would say that government has a major role. Otherwise, I mean I work in 78 uh, LWE districts, uh, Kandamal, Fulbani, Hinjalikat and all and I happened to ask a girl as to well, what do you have for breakfast and she actually I mean, it was, this was the stupidest question because she looked at me and said that they cut the grass overnight, soak it in the water and in the morning they put some uh, chili and salt and that's their breakfast, lunch and dinner. Now, if I have to treat, uh, train this uh, girl and incidentally the shirt that I'm wearing is stitched by this girl on the 31st day, uh, which means that we are able to train them 40%, 50% of the skills. And if these girls when, and boys from these, I mean, they have not seen trains, there is no electricity, uh, you have to train them and migrate all the way to Bangalore or Hyderabad or Chennai, one can really imagine um, the kind of challenges that are involved, which is where the role of the government comes in very significantly. Now, here if you see, um, as far as level 4 is concerned, that is a pretty much established that ma market and that business model is existing. Level 3, again there are private sector models that are available the small scale sector um, 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 and uh, private sector models are available for accountants, air hostesses, BPO, domestic, international and all that. <coughs> now, the focus on skill development has been to obviously to create capacities. Uh, 2022, we are talking about 500 million and uh, um, today we are at 3 million and uh, 10 more years to go every year 50 million. The numbers are absolutely mind boggling. Uh, the second uh, focus is to subsidize the cost of skills training through public institution, which is unviable. The third one is to get the, um, how do we rope in the uh, private sector. Now, if you look at this, this is the NSDC data, which had studied 17 sectors and as per that, the requirement was 330 million till 2022 uh, we, and annual requirement is 22 million whereas the annual training capacity is around 4. I mean, we are just nowhere in the game. Now, the government response has been, there are different uh, ministries, I will very quickly go through it because all of you may be aware of that. There is Ministry of Labor and Employment, 
um, uh, which is uh, working uh, through uh, employability. Uh, then um, there are the sectoral ministries. Um, there is this Ministry of uh, Rural and Urban Development. They are working on poverty alleviation. And obviously, there is uh, NSDC. <coughs> and the target seems to be 350 million, as far as the government ministries and departments are concerned. And uh, the PPP model, 150 million. <coughs> These are some of the initiatives of the Ministry of Labor and Employment. Again, I will very quickly go through that. Upgradation of 100 ITIs, modernization of 400 ITIs, adoption of ITIs, 50,000 SDC, skill development centers. <coughs> Ministry of Textile recently has launched uh, the integrated skill development component 1 and component 2. Ministry of Tourism has started Hunar Se Rozgar, and then there is DIPP. The most successful initiative or intervention from the government side happens to be from the Ministry of Rural Development for the simple reason that this was easy to operate and outcome based kind of a um, program which exclusively focused on uh, the below poverty line boys and girls and off late the ministry is focusing on the 78 districts of Chhattisgarh, Urissa, Jharkhand and so on. And now Ministry of Housing and Poverty Alleviation is also coming up with uh, a program which will focus on the urban youth. So, there is the rural and the urban, that is the division. This is the Ministry of uh, Rural Development Initiative. <coughs> NSDC, Dilip will make a presentation in the afternoon. Now, what are the challenges? The challenges are that the ministry, the, all the ministry programs have, have defined, there is a cap on the number. For example, Ministry of Rural Development, it is 15 crore or 7,800 candidates. Whereas, there are companies like ILFS, which has the training capacity of 10,000 candidates per month. So, there seems to be some kind of mismatch. The duplication of reporting of skill trainees, different ministries, different organizations, there is no central national skill registry. There are huge migration related issues apart from the uh, less than the minimum wages. There are major issues of uh, how to take care of these uh, candidates who migrate. Dormitory accommodation is just not available. The first month support is just not there. I will just skip this. Uh, I would, uh, this looks like a game of Alice in Wonderland and I will uh, use uh, Dr. Cantor's uh, model um, on innovation. And uh, she talks that when Alice is uh, taken by the queen to watch the game of croquet, um, unfortunately for her, um, all the uh, instruments had a mind of their own. So, when she picks up the mallet, which happens to be a flamingo, and uh, it, uh, the moment she tries to pick, uh, it decides to um, lower the head down. And uh, then when she tries to hit the ball, which happens to be a live hedgehog, and then there are these hoops where the ball has to go, uh, uh, the, is, is the playing card. And uh, well, I would uh, um, um, paraphrase this as the, uh, the, the mallet or the flamingo is, are the tools and technologies. Um, the earlier speaker talked about uh, the mobile platform. I mean, the classroom kind of a training is just not, just, just will not meet the numbers at all. It has to be a central server, central broadcasting, huge uh, population to be covered. So, tools and technologies, we need to uh, sort of look at that. The second, uh, the hedgehog. Or the ball, well, the analogy here are the trainees. And mind you, these days the trainees are actually dictating terms. We do a program with Minister of Rural Development in Him uh, of, called Himayat, which is for the boys and girls from the valley. And uh, at 4 o'clock, Colonel Shah, one of my program coordinators, gets a call from the parent of uh, a trainee. You know, so it is not only the breakfast, lunch, dinner, but you know, you have to take care of their utensils. I mean, it's it's completely funny kind of a uh, situation. And then there is this uh, the hoops, the goalpost uh, that is continuously changing. And finally, um, fortunately, this uh, game of croquet had only one referee. Now, I pity uh, uh, Dilip, uh, there are 17 ministries, each ministry coming with their own guidelines. So, imagine a game of hockey with 17 umpires and you have a very classic uh, kind of a confusing scenario um, happening in the. <coughs> now, my submission here is that for level 1 and 2, uh, the grant model is essential because of this poverty alleviation. We need to look at these uh, below poverty line popular boys and girls. We need to bring them to the national mainstream. Otherwise, the list of 78 LWEs will become 200. I mean, there is nothing to be proud about that. Um, 
and that's what I have written that I bring the large population into the footprint and equip them with the base skills. For level 3 and 4, both the companies and the employees have to pay for skill upgradation. And therefore, I recommend for the discussion a kind of a hybrid uh, model where uh, obviously we need to have the professional standards to operate in a given occupation. Introduction of industrial levy. Now, in mo most of the Latin American um, uh, and European countries, there is this industrial levy. The companies have to pay a certain percentage of the payroll, which goes towards training of uh, the tra um, uh, trainees, because ultimately it benefits the companies. It is no good, as uh, Murli, you so correctly pointed out, that the industry, you know, not making any effort on training the candidates. Then there is this concept of skill voucher and I noticed that there is a presentation from Gujarat Skill Development Mission. They have uh, started uh, skill vouchers. Skill voucher uh, appears to be one of the effective ways of uh, channelizing this uh, entire skill business. ILFS skills development uh, has been into the skills uh, business for the last uh, three years with the various ministries we have so far uh, trained uh, over uh, 2 lakh 50 thousand boys and girls and given them jobs with uh, the, uh, the industry. Uh, specifically with the Ministry of Rural Development, uh, we have uh, trained and placed uh, 170 thousand boys and girls, uh, most of them from the LWE districts. And we did a small calculation and we figured out that uh, when a boy or a girl is placed in a company and gets the minimum wage, he or she is able to save at least 2,000 rupees, which is repatriated back home, which goes into the uh, various things, you know, repairing the uh, roof of the hut, the cataract operation of the father. And uh, if you look at um, 170,000, then basically 34 crore, 2,000 rupees per month is getting back to the villages, which is roughly around 400 crores, is added year on year, uh, which goes into the development of that uh, particular hamlet or that particular village. And therefore, my recommendation would be that uh, let us not take a either or kind of an approach. It has to be a grant based approach because poverty alleviation is an important agenda. At the same time, the industry has to um, um, bear the, uh, take the responsibility and therefore, there has to be an industrial kind of a levy. And uh, finally, there has to be these uh, skill vouchers so that fly by night operators uh, could be very effectively checked. Thank you very much.